Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful but very very simple knot garden bracelet and this is incorporating size 11 o seed beads, the gecko beads and one of my favourites, the super duos and as you can see we're going to make each individual little segment and I'm going to show you how to join them together to make this beautiful and very simple little bracelet. So the first thing you need to know you need to have your gecko beads, I've gone for a gunmetal. Then your super duos, I've gone for a bright red and an 11 seed bead. So the first thing we need to do, you only need a tiny bit of thread to begin with. Uh, this is a size 12 tulip needle and I've got a piece of white fire line. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick up four of our super duos and four of our gecko beads, alternating them. So I'm going to pick up a super duo followed by a gecko a super duo, gecko, and repeat, super duo, gecko, super duo, gecko. There's no need for a stopper bead because we're going to be forming a loop. So I've got my four super duos and my four gecko beads. So I'm going to simply draw them down and leave a tail of about three or four inches at the end. We're going to be, we're going to be cutting it off at the end, so there's no need to worry about long tail and I'm simply going to tie a single knot nice and tight followed by a double knot. And this is a standard way that I tie off all of my loops when I'm making a piece of beaded jewellery. Give it a nice solid knot. So there we have our first little motif, little, little flower. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get away from the knot so I'm going to do this by simply, move that tail out of the way, by sewing through the super duo, through the in, inner hole, just after the knot, Keep that nice and tight. And then I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to do what's called a thread bridge. So all I'm going to do is I'm coming out of the interior hole and I'm going to jump to the exterior and pull that through. And then you can either work towards you in a clockwise or I tend to just flip it over and work anti-clockwise. I find that a bit easier. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start incorporating our 11 O's. So I'll just bring those across. So we're going to pick up five of our seed beads. So one, two, three, four, five. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew underneath the gecko into the next super duo. So these will sit just underneath, just pop them under, so make sure gecko stands slightly proud. So I'm going to repeat that all the way around. So I'm exiting through the super duo, I'm going to pick up one, two, three, four, five, elevens, pop underneath the gecko and sew them through, like so. And then I'm going to repeat the third time, so one, two, three, four, five, underneath the gecko, into the super duo, and then the final time. So I'm going to pick up one, two, three, four, five, under the gecko, and into the super duo. Okay, so I'll just lay that down nice and flat, so you can see now we have our beginning of our little section. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to follow in that direction and what I want to do is I want to sew through the five 11 O's so you're exiting just before the first super duo and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up three 11 O's so one two three and I'm going to skip the super duo and sew through the next Five 11s. And what this does, it gives a little hat over the top of the super duo. So I'm going to do that all the way around. So this is a really nice little project if you, if you only have a few of your beads left, because as you can see, you don't need very many for a motif. And this is going to form a bracelet, but obviously you can just have, make two and make a little cute pair of earrings if you wanted to. Okay, so just do number three. So one, two, three, 
and skip the super duo and so through the five elevens. So we just come to do the last one. Now this actually forms the motif, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the next step as well to enable you to join your little motifs together. So I'm just going to sew through, it doesn't matter how many you sew through, I'm just going to go through a couple there. Okay, so I'm going to lay that down for you again, so you can see now that we have, so that's our completed motif. As you can see, it's very, very simple. So what we need to do now is we need to attach it to our other sections. So I've made a piece here already consisting of two sections. So what we're going to do to join them together is what I want to do is I want to sew through. So I'm exiting from the middle of the group of five that we originally put underneath the gecko. So can you see we've got one, two, three, four, five, I'm exiting through the central. And what we're going to do is I'm going to pick up three elevens and what we're going to do is we're going to make a little section of right angled weave, otherwise known as a pico. So I'm exiting through this middle bead. I'm going to take my needle around and enter in exactly the same bead from the back. So then when I pull, as you can see, we've got a little pico, a little diamond of four beads. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew all the way around the beads, which this will also, whoops, this will strengthen your piece of work as well as enabling you to get to the right position to do the next section. So I'm just going to continue to sew round. I'm going to sew all the way through, making sure I don't get my tail caught. I said that tail will be cut off at the end. I'm just going to sew all the way through. Now what I want to do, I want to end up back at the second gecko opposite. So that's the third of my little section I've just made. So I want to come up through the middle of the group of five, so I'm going to sew through the next three. So one, two, three. So I'm going to pull that up. Now what I want to do now is I want to make a pico, very similar to the one we made here, this top side. But what I want to do is I want to incorporate my next sections. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to lay this down. I'm going to pick up one of my 11-0. This is a section I've made already, which will make complete sense once I show you what I'm going to do next. So I've picked up one. I'm going to sew through this bead on the section I've previously made. I'm going to pull that through. Okay, and then I'm going to pick up one more. So this is the three, so that's the one. This is the two, and this is the three. Of, do you remember I've just shown you how to do the first pico, but this is the three. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle through the same bead. So in effect, I've made a pico, but in that pico is our motif. So when I pull, can you see now, it brings the two little sections together. So then all I'm going to do is I'm going to sew through that pico I've just made once more, just to strengthen it. And then I'm just going to sew away from that pico. So pull that nice and tight. And then to finish, what I'm going to do is I'm exiting in between these two 11 O's. I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come up in between the two. I'm going to pull my thread so I have a little loop about the size of a grape. I'm going to take my needle down, top to bottom, once, down, top to bottom, twice. And I'm going to pull nice and tight so I've formed a nice neat knot. Now that knot is embedded in between those two 11s. So now I'm just going to sew through a few beads just to get away from the knot. And then I can go in and I can flip it over. And then using a sharp pair of scissors, I can cut the tail off. I can cut my working thread off. And that's our third piece in a row already. So all we do then is we make our next section and incorporate the next. So if I just pop that down and show you the completed bracelet. 
So this is the bracelet. This is the this is the uh, the knot garden bracelet. All these little sections interlocking using the little picots, and then to attach my clasp at the end, all I've done is as I'm making my pico on the end, is I've then taken my needle through, and instead of going back through the pico, I've made another loop of 10 11 O's. I've gone round again to strengthen it. I've gone through, tied off in exactly the same way, and then that gives you a seed bead loop then to attach a jump ring and your toggle clasp. So we've made our seed bead loop, one end of our toggle, I've added all my bracelet sections, all the way down to the other end and then I've repeated with a little loop at the other end for the second part of the toggle. So as you can see this is a beautifully simple, very very effective, very elegant knot garden bracelet. I hope you enjoy the demonstration.